one of the first and most crucial things you have to do before you install Linux is to disable BitLocker in Windows. This will disable encryption and allow you to partition the drive and prepare it for dual booting. And in order to do that, all you gotta do is go to the start menu, type in BitLocker or start typing it, then go to manage BitLocker and then turn off BitLocker. And then turn off BitLocker again when this window pops up and you're done. The next step is just as crucial if you wanna be able to partition your drive without having headaches and that's to disable the Windows fast boot and delete the hibernation file. In order to do that, pop open the start menu, type in CMD for command prompt, right click, run as administrator, hit yes, then simply type in power CFG space dash H space off, and then press enter, and you're done. So this next step can be done before or after you install Linux, it doesn't matter. We're going to set Windows to use universal time so that it stays synchronized with Linux so you can swap between the OS's without the clocks desyncing. For example, when I switch from Linux back to Windows, my Windows clock ends up five hours ahead and that's really annoying and I don't like having to resynchronize with the online clock every single time. So. We change this setting so that the OS's stay the same. It's a real time saver. Here's how you do it. Go to the start menu, type in registry editor, go to registry editor, hit yes, go to H key local machine, system, current control set, which is right here. Go to control, then time zone information, which is right down here. Then what you gotta do is you gotta create a new D word. So right click in this white area and go to new and then D word, 32 bit value. Make that and call it real time is universal. Make sure you do it with that proper casing with the capital R, T, I, and U. Hit enter and then Go into it by double clicking on it and change the value to one. That will make sure it's enabled. Then all you gotta do is close the registry editor and the next time you restart your computer, your clock will be set to universal time. Next, we need to prepare Windows to be able to access, read and write to the drives that you installed Linux on. And that's as simple as installing a couple of drivers like WinBTRFS and ext4fsd among others. And to do that, all you have to do is go into your browser of choice, go to their GitHub pages, which I'll have linked in the description below, find the releases section. This is for ext4fsd. Click on the latest release, download the exe file, not the source files. Just save it to your downloads folder. We'll do the same thing for winbtrfs, which is very important. Find the releases section again, download the latest release. In this one, we'll want to download the zip file that doesn't have any extra stuff on it, just btrfs and then the version number.zip. Download that one. And then once those are downloaded, you can close your browser. There you go. Go to your downloads directory. Find your files for ext4 FSD, just double click on it, hit yes here, then follow the prompts, which is really just install, and then close when it's completed. That one's done. For btrfs, just find that zip file we downloaded earlier, and then extract it into your downloads folder or wherever you'd like, and then find the btrfs any file, which is the setup information file, or this one I have selected right here. Right click on it, select install, say open, hit yes here, and then you're good to go. You can close that and restart your computer for the next step. And finally, the last step before you can install Linux is to pop into your system's BIOS and disable secure boot. 
Not all distros require you to disable secure boot. Some of them work just fine with it, but the vast majority don't work so well with it. And I know Ventoy, you're gonna experience some issues. So it's best to just turn it off. It doesn't really harm anything to do so. And quite frankly, you won't miss it. To get into the BIOS, reboot your computer and spam the delete key or whatever the post screen tells you to. Every system is different. Some use different buttons. Look it up for your specific make and model. Once you access your BIOS, you'll get a screen similar to this. Once again, not all systems are created the same and not all BIOSes are created the same. Your mileage may vary. Look up your particular motherboard's manual or videos online regarding your specific make and model so that you know exactly where to go in the BIOS but most of them have the same basic functionality. If your BIOS is modern, it'll even likely have a search functionality like this right up here in the top right on mine, where you can just click that and type in secure boot. And then from here, all you gotta do is disable it. Perfect. And then you're done. Hit escape there. If you wanna go the long way, go to the security section of your BIOS and look for secure boot. Mine is right here. Same thing. Change it from enabled to disabled. You're done. You can hit exit. Save the changes and hit yes or whatever it asks you. And then your system will reboot and then you'll be ready to go. Don't forget to throw in your USB thumb drive with Ventoy on it that we created with the instructions in the uh, video that's about to pop up here or is linked in the description below. Go check that out if you haven't done so. And then uh, let your computer reboot and you're ready to install Linux. Once you reboot your system, if you followed all the instructions from this and the previous video about installing Ventoy and you have your thumb drive in the system, you'll be greeted with the Ventoy screen with all your ISOs ready to go and you're off to the races. Happy Linuxing, and I'll see you in the next video.